Okay, the first thing you want to do whenever you start washing your dogs is you want to make sure you have good water pressure. I just had to change the filter on uh, on our uh, well our filter here to make sure that I got good water pressure. Don't wash your dogs unless you have good water pressure. You'll end up keep getting too much soap on them and you won't get it rinsed off and it will cause them to be super itchy. So we'll come back to you in just a second with a little bit more from this. All right, Luke Smith here with Packsmith Dog Training. I got the GoPro on the head because we're about to get into our third video of pandemic puppies. And I uh, today we're going to talk about what we all want to know about but we don't want to do, and that's bathing our dog. And we're going to go through the ins and outs of that so that you guys know what's necessary and what's not. So um, stay tuned to that, and uh, we'll get right to it. Okay, here we go. We got our dog. We're going to try to get him in the tub. If your dog will get in the tub, great. Come on. Climb. Come on. Climb. Good boy. If they won't get in the tub, free. Then we're going to make it easier for them. Especially if you have a leash, just grab them by the leash up underneath the belly, pick them up, set them in, and then be done with it. Don't drag it out. Don't try to coax your dog in there on the first try. If you're trying to get your dog bathed, uh, it doesn't really help much. So I'm going to have this leash. We may not use it a whole bunch with cinch, but we may. But what you want to have is you want to have it for control. If you have some place to anchor it to, that's great, but almost nobody will. So we're going to try to get this done without doing that. Cinch man can do it though. He's a good boy. So first thing, we're just going to go ahead and turn the water on. While I'm letting that water heat up to a level we can't can deal with, I went ahead and mixed this up. I put about that much soap in there and the rest of it water. I put the cap back on so they have a little bit better control over where I'm squirting it. And we're gonna be very liberal with this and just go ahead and give him plenty of soap all over his body. We're using the blue, uh, the blue stuff just because I happen to have a water, I happen to have a bottle that we used for dishes um, that had no soap in it, so we go ahead and use that. But you can use the white one as preference, but the blue will work just fine. So we should have a reasonable temperature. We're gonna kind of treat it like a baby. Don't uh, don't get too too hot with it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use. Um, we can use lots of different uh, heads. You can play around with that and see what it is. But the very first thing we want to do is, is we want to go ahead and get the dog wet. So we're going to start by doing it a little bit lower, dropping the soap for posterity. And we're going to go ahead and start it low, see how they react to it. And if they react to it, then we're going to come back in a little, you know, again. But if you need to hold them, go ahead and hold them. If they will stand here and take it, then that's fine. So. We're gonna go ahead and get Cinch Man all, all soaked up. Now, in the tub, they're gonna be a little bit more nervous than regular, so take your time. Don't get in a big hurry, but eventually you are going to have to move them and you'll get to see me do that. And it, uh, it's not super clean, you know, uh, it, it sometimes doesn't go very great. So um, just bear with it and do the very best you can. So the idea is we want to keep the dog relatively comfortable in this situation. The same thing we did with the nails we can do with treats uh, in this situation. Unless you absolutely have to, don't, you don't necessarily need to wash the head, although I'm going to show you how to do it, but you want to be very careful not to get soap in the eyes. That's super important because that will cause them lots of irritation. Um, and it's really bad for them, so just don't do that. But I'm gonna try to show you guys how to do that the very best that you can, uh, so that your dog's face doesn't stink, since some of us like to get kisses. Isn't that right, Sinch? Can I have a kiss? All right, he's not feeling too bad. He still gave me a kiss. So, we got the dog pretty much watered, you know, watered down. Um, you're, you're gonna, sometimes I leave the water running, sometimes I don't, sometimes it's more of a pain to get it back up to temperature, but I'm just gonna take the soap, and I'm just going to squirt it. Since we've got the cap on, we can cover each area pretty liberally without having to be terribly careful about it and just coat them down. And then whenever you do, soap them up. I know this is super difficult and hard to keep up with, but we're going to go ahead and get it done. I think it'll be fine. So you want to get your hands all up in everywhere. We're even going to have to 
violate the dog a little bit. We're gonna wanna scrub in the pads like this. If your dog's freaking out about this, hold onto the leash, do it one-handed, take as much time as you need. The idea is just to keep it as calm as possible. Cinch Man has had a number of baths uh, in his life, and by a number I mean lots and lots and lots of, so he is not too bad, but he's a healer. He doesn't like water. It's not his favorite gig. When we were in school, we had to do the water drills to teach him how to swim, and that was his least favorite exercise always. So you're gonna need to scrub the butt. I, though I am a dog groomer son, will not be showing you how to express the anal glands because, um, and they do need to be expressed. That's why your dog scoots his butt on the carpet a lot of the times. Sometimes it's worms, but a lot of the times it's that their anal gland needs expressed. And uh, I don't do that, just plain and simple. I just don't do it and maybe that's wrong but I will if if it gets to the point my dog needs that I'm gonna take it to a groomer and in a short period of time six nine months the chances that your dog is going to suffer any problems from that is not really that great and they have their own ways of dealing with it to a degree so yes I'm gonna have to get all up underneath him and uh, touch him inappropriately but uh, we're not doing it for any other reason aside from the dog is gross and it needs to be bathed so when it comes time to move them around we're just going to do it we're not going to get we're not going to get real serious about it we're going to wet down the other side again because that water will have run off a little bit especially if you have a dog with hair like a healer we're just going to soap him up again see how difficult this is not bad and especially if you mix your soaps thin enough then you shouldn't have any problem so I don't know how I'm getting you with the camera if, I, if you're being able to see what I'm doing very well but I'm trying to do the best that I can so that we can see how this goes and the general speed in which you can do it I'm pretty fast at this because I've bathed probably thousands of dogs so don't expect to be super fast do a good job make sure that the dog is comfortable uh, if you can talk to them I talk to dogs all the time whenever I'm doing it I use a very calm voice but my actions, I just want to be really matter of fact with it and I want to just get right to work, get it done because they will end up being less anxious about that situation whenever you, uh, whenever you just get on to it as if it's everyday business. So I'll go ahead and rinse the hands off a little bit. And then this is the important part is we are going to rinse him. Now when we rinse him, we are going to take our time. The idea is we want this water to run clear and I tell you what, right now it is not going to run very clear with Cinch because he is a grubby boy and he's been, he has not neglect or he has neglected his baths for a while and we're going to pretend like that's his fault and not his dad's and so we're going to go ahead and do this and let it run. You can use your hand kind of like a squeegee, get the hair nice and wet and then push it all out. Your dog is probably going to shake on you at some point in time and get you all wet and probably your whole bathroom wet and that is just something that we understand going into it and so it's a bummer so don't wear your nice sunday clothes that's for sure so you can put if you got the temperature right and it's not too hot you can put the you can put the uh, water right onto the thing and kind of brush it down like this with the head of the shower head and sometimes that'll help get this stuff out, but we wanna make sure that they're nice and nice and rinsed. Obviously the paws will be the last thing that we need to finish up. So we'll do that a little bit later. So this hair up underneath this, around the neck is often really tough to get the soap out of and they will sit there and scratch it and scratch it and scratch it afterwards. So if he comes up in my video scratching later on, then you'll know I didn't rinse him well enough. Uh, if that's the case, just rinse him again. Um, he'll, it'll take a while for him to dry, but it's worth doing. If you push against the dog, they will push back. So do understand that. Don't think that the dog is, is being resistant to you if you push on them. They're just leaning into you, and that is a survival instinct. It is not something that they're doing to piss you off or to be resistant, because when you let go of them, they stop. They stop pushing. So if you're gonna move them and you want them to move, don't hold them. Push them to the spot that you want and then let go and that will um, help them to understand that this is where you want them to be. I like to sometimes squeeze the water out of the hair. Now understand you're not gonna get 
both sides perfect each time, so you're probably gonna go over them both twice. If you avoid getting the face wet, they have a tendency to not shake as much. So that's another uh, little good tip. Just get in there and do it. Cinch man, you're such a good boy. Such a good boy. I hope the sound's okay on this video. It seemed really loud whenever I did it earlier to test it. So I don't know if my voice, if I'm using the right tone, but if it's too loud, I'll turn it down on the editor, I suppose. So, because this one is gonna be a YouTube video cinch. So make sure that all of their under parts are nice and rinsed out. Probably means that you gotta get your hands in there. Tough nuggets. Right, cinch? Is that funny? It's probably not very funny. So, make sure that they're nice and rinsed out and that it's all running clean. Make sure, like with Cinch, he has this, these tail feathers. Make sure that you get plenty of water through those so that they rinse out. And we don't want to leave any soap on the dog. It will really, really irritate them. This is how I do the tail. Just run it down to the end, that works. And so aside from a sore back, I think we did pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin him around again. Good boy. I know he's uncomfortable. Don't feel too bad for him. Um, if somebody was giving me a bath and moving me around without explaining to me what they're doing, then I probably would be uncomfortable too. But you just gotta get used to it and he'll understand that this is a good thing in the long run. Don't you dare jump out of here. So, we got that done. Last bit, we're gonna go ahead and get the camera wet because we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do the face in the best way that I know how to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna point the nose down and we're gonna go ahead and just water down the face. Point the nose down so it doesn't run in their face. Give it a slight wipe off, not much. You're gonna put the soap in your hand like this and then we're going to gently come over the top and get it on the back of the head right here. And then we're gonna just move it around really gently. We're not being careless about this because we do not want it to get in the dog's face. And this is the kind of stuff that your groomer goes through for you. So uh, maybe a little extra tip next time you go to the grooming shop because um, this is not the most fun. So if we ever get to go back to the grooming shop, which I'm sure we will. The next bit, I'm gonna go up underneath the head. And then from there, I'm going to pull it off up the side like this. And we're not trying to get this super soapy. We're just more wanting to get the stuff to break loose. We're gonna go down the middle, single finger, and then a lot of times if I have any soap on my hands, I'll just take it and wipe it off of somewhere else, put it on the face a little bit, and then get up underneath the chin, and that is about how we do it. Getting, don't forget the back of the ears. Now, when we're rinsing the head, this is gonna suck because there's not really any great way to do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do it one side at a time. And I am going to plug up his ear and he's not gonna like it necessarily, but I'm gonna plug up his ear and fold it downwards as much as I can and then just go ahead and rinse it off. That way it doesn't run in his ear. This is gonna run back down the neck. So you're going to get a little bit more Gonna have to rinse that out a little bit more. Then I'm gonna tilt his head up and I'm going to hold it right here and just let it run. See I'm holding his mouth? It's fine. Hold it only as firmly as you need, the same way as when, when we're doing the nail video, um, is that we want to not, we don't wanna hold it super tight. Yep, there he goes, there he goes. Yeah, that's good boy. All right, sometimes I'll even give the dogs a shake command just to just to add something else to it. And then whenever they do, I praise them. And that way they don't have to feel like they're a bad dog for shaking. Because if we if we just leave it to our own devices and our own thoughts, we will probably get aggravated with the dog every time that they shake on us because we don't want to get wet. And there's no sense in getting aggravated with a dog. It's a dog. And dogs don't think the same as we do. They don't understand the same things as we do. The last bit point his head down and just spray him and it's a bummer but he'll he'll live with it and then go up underneath make sure that we're getting it nice and good make sure it's running all the way down and out 
and then we should be pretty good. Now, I would touch the hair after this and make sure that you don't find any soapy spots. And if you don't find any soapy spots, then we are done, Cavicus. What a good boy he is. Look at that dog. He is just not happy. So, we're gonna give the feet a rinse one more time, just for posterity, just to make everybody feel good. Make sure that we're not neglecting anything. You do the best you can. This is kind of awkward. I'm just reaching right on through him. I'm spraying the water from different areas. I'm moving him around as little as I can, but as much as I need. And then now we're done. Seems like all the water's down at the end. And I'm just gonna shut the water off. And now we have a washed dog. Yeah. So I will also wring him out. And I'm not worried about this. This does two things. Number one, it gets most of the water out so that you'll need less towels. Second of all, what it ends up doing is it, may, it helps you check and make sure that you didn't miss any soap like we did. So in his undercarriage, apparently, we've missed a little bit of soap, maybe a little bit. No, it doesn't seem like there's much under the armpits. So go ahead and go back. Don't, don't leave it undone. Don't forget to make sure that the temperature is good for your dog, that it's not too too hot or too cold. And then we're gonna get back up underneath here and we're gonna get this all the way up in his pits just to make sure. And then we're gonna take it back around. We're gonna get all the way up underneath the leg, let that run a little bit. And, uh, and we'll be almost done. All right. You can check for the soap beforehand, but it's better to check afterwards, again, because your hands feel, will feel for it differently. But, and we're gonna go ahead and wring him back out again. And then after that, we're gonna towel him down to about, I don't know, 60% as dry as we want him to be. And then we're gonna put him somewhere where he can be wet. Um, we're gonna get him as dry as we can, of course. If we can get him 75%, that's fine, but sometimes the difference between 60 and 75 is four towels. And you should be able to get this done with one, two towels max. So, we're gonna go ahead and back it up. We're gonna make sure that there's a spot for him to be. I'm gonna move my knee pad towels and where I'm watching myself on this phone. All right. Free. Good boy. All right, so you just, oh yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. So sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to wipe down the, the bathroom afterwards. So make this a fun portion. This is where you get to love on the dog through a towel. Turn the heater down. Shh. I'm sure that doing this next to the heater is probably less than ideal. But we have nowhere else to do it. Right, Cinch. All right. Rubbing them around. Up underneath the armpits, down the sides. Make sure you get the feet nice and good. <sighs> Apologize to the wife about the toilet paper, especially in these days. Get them about as good as we can. And then, if you want to spend the time to get your dog perfectly dry, then you're a crazy person. Because without an air dryer and without a bunch of towels, you're just not gonna get it done. Dogs, coats, most dogs' coats anyway, are built to hold a certain amount of water and they're just not gonna do it. So, that'll be the end of it. We'll go ahead and let you go here. Luke Smith with the Packsmith Dog Training and a clean cinch, and we are out of here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all those buttons you can push, okay? Bye.